Once upon a time in Baghdad, there was a very wealthy young man called Sinbad. Sinbad had inherited a fortune when his rich merchant father had died. Sinbad was very generous with his wealth, always buying fine clothes for himself and his ever-growing circle of friends. Oh, I'm, I'm so rich and I have so many friends around me, I feel as though I've been blessed by the gods, he said to one of his many cronies. But... One day, Sinbad received a rather nasty shock when he discovered he had spent his entire fortune. Oh no, this is terrible news, he cried. What's more, all the friends who had been sucking up to him for years had mysteriously disappeared into thin air. Huh, <laughs> well, so much for that shallow bunch, he sighed. But never mind, I must find a way of earning a living. So, Sinbad sold his huge house, and with the money he made from that, he purchased some very expensive silk. I must follow in my father's footsteps and become a merchant, he said, as he walked to the nearby harbour. When he got to the harbour, he approached some merchants who were loading cargo onto a huge galleon. And after some negotiations, the merchants agreed that Sinbad could join them on their travels, and together with all their merchandise to sell in foreign lands, they set off to journey far across the seven seas. All was going very well until one night, far out to sea, beneath a dark, foreboding sky, they were all awakened by a terrifying screeching sound. They all looked up in horror to see a huge prehistoric one-eyed bird swooping down on the ship. This was a Cyclops, and its evil intention was to seize the galleon and use it as a nest in which she could lay her eggs. And with her massive claws, she tipped the ship upside down, causing all the merchants to drown in the sea, apart from one of them. Sinbad the Sailor as the triumphant Cyclops flew away with its magnificent prize, Sinbad managed to cling onto a piece of passing driftwood, and with the tide in his favour, he began to float safely towards a distant shore. When he washed up on the beach, Sinbad was greeted by a wise old man called Charubu, who took pity on Sinbad's plight. He took him to see the island's ruler, who was called King Alkuza. When Sinbad explained to the king how he had arrived on the island, Alcuza offered him a job, helping out with the cargo ships down at the island's port. Now, one day, while Sinbad was on duty, working at the port, Charubu approached Sinbad with a huge, rusty old trunk. Hey, I recognise that trunk, exclaimed Sinbad. And so you should, said Charubu. It has your name clearly embossed on the lid. Charubu prized open the trunk to reveal the silk Sinbad had brought with him on his maiden voyage. It washed up on the shore very early this morning, explained Charubu as he handed over the trunk to a very delighted Sinbad. Sinbad sold the wonderful exotic silk to King Alcuza at an excellent price. Oh, oh, thank you, Sinbad. This happens to be my favorite kind of silk, said the king. I shall commission a thousand suits to be made for me by one of my millions of royal tailors. How lovely for me. Sinbad thanked the king and Chirubu for their kind hospitality before making his way safely back home to Baghdad. However, back in Baghdad, Sinbad soon became quite restless for another adventure. Taking with him another cargo of silk, Sinbad took to the high seas with merchants from the local harbour. But, unfortunately for Sinbad and his friends, before they reached their destination, a pirate ship attacked and threw them all overboard into the shark-infested waters. 
Well, they all swam for their lives, and Sinbad and the merchants were washed up on a rocky island. Now, in the middle of the island was an enormous castle that was owned by an evil giant troll called Fadi. And Fadi, the repulsive creature, opened his door and quickly threw a net over Sinbad and the merchants. Ha <laughs> ha! laughed Fadi. Your punishment for trespassing on my land is to be eaten up by me. Yes! <laughs> Fadi placed his hand under the net and started to gobble up the merchants one by one. But when he got to Sinbad and two of his colleagues, luckily the troll grew tired. I am now going to have a little kip, I think, and uh, then I will eat you later, said Fadi, as he lay down at the foot of a rock and fell into a deep, deep sleep. Well, as the evil troll snored, Sinbad managed to free himself and his two companions by cutting the net with his trusty sword. But before they tiptoed off, Sinbad approached Fadi, who was belching disgusting fumes and snoring ferociously. The fast-thinking sailor lit a match and threw it towards the beast. Due to the various gases, the parping Fadi was set on fire immediately. And roaring in pain, the giant troll exploded. Yes, exploded. And Fadi was eventually reduced to a pile of smelly ashes. Right, let's get out of here, whispered Sinbad. And they all ran towards the sea in the hope that a passing ship would stop and take them home. But their hopes were dashed when suddenly, emerging from the sand dunes, a nasty-looking slimy creature appeared. She had a long, wart-ridden nose, a pointy hat, and six spindly arms, which on closer inspection were venomous snakes. I am Sheila, the Sand Witch, and I know that you are all here to steal my treasure! The Sand Witch's angry head span around at great speed, and her snake arms grabbed Sinbad's two friends and strangled them. Sinbad was bitten on the arm by one of the snakes, but luckily he survived. So he drew out his trusty sword and skillfully chopped off the head of each snake. You are gonna pay for this, screamed Sheila. The sandwich jumped up high onto a rock to make her seem taller and more powerful. But Sinbad noticed that the rock was unsteady and he pushed it with all his might, sending the sandwich careering down into an abyss. Ah! Yes! Selena, the nasty sandwich, was never to be seen again. <laughs> and Sinbad could not believe his luck when he looked in the hole left by the rock and he found an enormous pile of shimmering gold and precious stones that would make a man rich beyond his wildest dreams. Still fearing for his life, Sinbad filled up his pockets and made his way to the coast, where he managed to flag down a ship. And as luck would have it, the captain of the ship was his old friend Cherubu. And for the price of two diamonds and a dazzling white pearl, Cherubu agreed to have his galleon turned around and deliver Sinbad safely back to Baghdad. At the end of the journey, Cherubu stayed for a whole two days just to hear about Sinbad the Sailor's fascinating expeditions. And then Cherubu came to England, he told me all about it, and now I'm telling you. How about that? Billy believed he was a failure when he spent 
Don't know what his father made But when he sailed the seven seas He made the money back with ease Selling silver a very high grade On his travels so much courage he displayed